I don't know, should we start with a timestamp? <laughs> it's uh, warming up. It's 47 in the garage, 42 outside. It was 25 last night. So I'm going to see if I can work with the... Uh, ooh, are you fuzzy. See if I can work with the uh, garage door open for a little while and get a little bit of sunlight in me. Get rid of that uh, seasonal affective, dis disfective, how you say that? Disorder? Seasonal affective disorder? We're gonna go with that. Anyway, back on the bus. And uh, I think I'm gonna go do some more uh, stand up metal work. Fire truck here in the background is uh, Santa driving around on a fire truck. Yeah. So, these look like they're fairly easy to get to, so I figure we'll, maybe we'll set up and we'll start whittling away in here. And uh, I'll probably patch it from underneath, I'm thinking, and fold the lip either down or up. Haven't decided. We'll lay a piece of paper up in there. I'll trace it and uh, see what we get. And uh, I'll start making something for this. It actually has a step in it right there, too. What is that? Two layers. You can't see nothing, can you? I think the only thing that really kind of goes here is um, the bolt for the seatbelt, the uh, the welded on nut. So I could probably get away without having, uh, getting too fancy with dropping a channel in there. But uh, let me get my little flapper wheel in there and start cleaning up some metal and uh, let's make some patterns. And where we are now. That's the one on the passenger side. And I got a little overzealous. I jumped over to the uh, driver's side, did the patch over there, but uh, I had uh, I got more work to do up in here. This is not connected. Seems like this uh, this upper section is floating. So I got to come back and kind of tap that in, squeeze it in, and get in there and weld it. I noticed it on the other side. Then I went back. Watch your head. All right, where are we? We are in the patch on this side. Same deal. And then uh, I started looking down the corner down here, and um, that was floating. And I looked at the parts bus out there, and I think they're supposed to be attached. And uh, they have seam sealer open, but I'm pretty sure that they're either spot welded together or um, were welded on the seam. So that had all kinds of rust and crap inside there. So I tried different kind of grinding wheels and cutting wheels to get in there to clean the metal up so I can weld it. I actually found um, a drill bit. I like the separate bit was in it, so that's what I used. And I just kind of went up and down the cracks. You know, like that, and I got in there and I cut all the crap off and gave me a nice shiny metal to weld to. So uh, I learned myself a new trick. And I don't know, I'm probably gonna jump back to the other side, maybe finish that up, but I do have all the welder and stuff over here. And the other one that's got me intrigued is uh, this bottom section of this wheel well right here. Uh, maybe making a piece for that. So uh, I'm not sure which way I'm gonna go. Um, probably should finish up the front, that way I can kind of shut the door. And the other thing is too is uh, this guy. This, uh, all the other ones are solid welded, pretty much all the way around the seams, except for this patch right here, which it was stitch welded, but it never got back. Never went back and kind of filled them all in. Uh, the only problem is there's so much rust in between this. I don't know if I can get all that crap kind of cleaned out of there to get uh, a decent weld. So I may try it, but uh, I may have to abandon ship on that. Just seam seal right over it, just because yeah, you might be able to get all the crap out of the little crevices. So, I can try the drill bit uh, deal again, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> Shall we? Left handed? Yeah, you can't get all of it. 
It's a start. Anyway, I'm gonna go try. Uh, first, I'm gonna level with the sander. Then I'm gonna. What am I gonna do next? I could try hitting it with a little wire wheel. See if I'll take some of the crap out of there. But what I'm gonna do is I still have one brownie left over, and uh, so that we're gonna go ponder with that and a, uh, a half and half uh, Newmans. So I shall ponder and uh, we'll get on something. All right, so I uh, hit it with a flapper disc, just try to knock them down fairly flat, and then I came back with a wire wheel, and uh, that was my. Uh, my crevice cleaner in there, and it's you know it's decent. It's just still a bunch of bunch of crap in there. I'll figure out how that's going to weld in a second. Um, worst case, I'll fire up the other welder, and flux core welder is better for that kind of crap than um, using the bottle, just because um, it just works. It, it, it creates its own flux when it gets into the little cavities. It doesn't make as pretty a weld, but uh, sometimes there's rusty, crappy stuff. Anyway, let's see if we can do this. Let's see it? Where am I? So here you can see behind those welds. That's what my issue is. And um, this is probably going to be the most used part of this vehicle right here. Getting in and out of it, your feet slopping on and off it all the time. So uh, I should probably make it so that it kind of lasts longer than the rest of it now, shouldn't I? So I'm going to do my best to uh, clean that up. Um, and again, you know, worst case, I don't make it any worse. I just. Uh, it would seem sealer anyway, but uh, let's see how that will take a weld and uh, I'm going to run around. Probably, I'm probably going to do like um, half inch, half inch, half inch. I'm not going to jump around. I kind of like to leave the puddle kind of glowing a little bit. And then when the puddle, the, the yellow starts going more to orange and darker, then I like to hit it again and go. Still kind of keep the heat going so you're not having to go start cold again. Um, and also the shielding gas kind of stays in that area so that you don't get that first beginning little piece of crap because um, the gas is, uh, you know, it's, there's oxygen hitting a weld. So I'm going to go try and do that and I'll uh, turn it back on and see what it looks like for better or for worse. And a little after. It went pretty good actually. Blew out two spots up top where I had to go chase it. One right there and another one right there. You know when you start. Blowing metal away, I, I kind of run the welder hotter than I should, but I kind of like to be able to burn it in, burn it in, burn it in. But you got to watch you don't go too far because you burn it through, burn it through. And then I tried to go make one nice real heavy pass. You can see the top of it, it looks decent. Then I blew this whole corner of it out right here. <laughs> so then I had to go run a whole bunch of weld over it again to, just to fill up the crack. So be it. Now it'll be all solid again. I'm gonna go hit that with a disc now and see if I can go clean that up somewhat and level it down a little bit. And uh, just enough, not looking to make it flush, but I'm just looking to take all the highs off just so it's not rough. It kind of matches how the rest of it's put together. I wonder if they uh, screwed up on this uh, dog leg. Because it, look like, it looks like there's a gap here, probably, and I want to say quarter inch. So it looks like it may have been welded together. Then they sliced it and had to kick it out a little bit, and then there's a piece of strip underneath it that's uh, kind of holding it together. You see it get wider there. Either that or there just wasn't enough metal on this fender to begin with. But uh, the door jam actually looks pretty good the way, they, the way it closes. You know, the spacing looks decent. So that's what I'm going to go do now. I'm going to go uh, get a grinder out and uh, see if I'm going to knock that puppy down and uh, clean it up a little bit and then figure out from there. I think that's the rhythm I'm going to go. I probably got, uh, I don't know, two inches already kind of gone. I got to I gotta watch it don't go out too far because I'm running the welder hot and then this is really thin and it kind of blows away. So I think I want to try to concentrate more in the middle, but there's going to be areas again where it's, I have to try to chase it or leave it one of the two. I think I'm just going to go over that whole strip like that. It'll probably take me 15, 20 minutes stitching it. So uh, turn you back on after we see what we got. You can still hear it making noise. All right, so here's the aftermath. And I went and I, that was the first two inches. And I just kind of kept going, 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 going. About two and a half feet later. And then, you know, eventually I couldn't keep filling the crack in the center of it. I just had to go each its separate ways. 
but uh, seems pretty good. Had to chase a couple of runners, like right there. There was a, it blew out, and there was one other spot up there. So I'm gonna come back and hit with a flapper disc, and we're gonna go call that a day. But I would say that dog leg is much better attached than it was before. At least it's uh, solid metal all the way around, you know. So the magic of seam sealer will make that look so much better. And the other side is done. I, I got to do the same over here that I did on the. Uh, I didn't see my other side that I did over here. You know, that's not attached. And uh, I think this part of the work is much better. I think the seam here is much better. But uh, I want to go back over there and uh, while I'm at it, you know. And uh, the wire wheel. I used a big wire wheel on a grinder, cup disc, and uh, that's kind of how it leaves it afterwards. You can see where. Somebody else did it and then what that will knock it down to. So I don't know if I want to go over that with oil-based paint or not. Or uh, uh, Rust-Oleum kind of like, you know, commercial stuff. Straight paint or do I want to do the primer than the paint? I want to do a little, a little bit of homework on it. I still want to, can you guys see like this little tip sticking out? I still got to run it with, I rather round it all there welds with a flapper disc yet to just get rid of all that top, tall stuff. And the same here. I gotta, I gotta go over my stuff and uh, clean it up a little. If anybody knows of a back window <laughs> for a uh, early bay window, double or single cab, they're different from a bus. There's a curve. See that curve on top? That's the difference. So, like a bus, the hatch is straight across. That's got, got that set up. Worst case, I'm gonna make it out of Lexan probably, or make some kind of like louvered window or something for it. But uh, that's the only thing I really know off the top of my head that I'm missing is that piece right there. So that was easy to, to uh, we're going to take a break. These were nice, easy stand up ones. You got to uh, just walk over to it, sit on the stool and weld. You didn't have to crawl underneath sideways. I'm getting there. Uh, I guess I'm going to wind down this video here. I may or may not play with the other side a little bit, but uh, I think I'm going to probably shut this one off here. And uh, we'll pick it up on the next installment of the Musty One Show. Alright guys, again thanks for watching, comment, subscribing, take care.